right, so we're here with uh, Tobias from Tubu Tech. Hi. Hey, yeah. Tobias, how's it going, man? Yeah, great. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, you've got some real nice, uh, some real nice goodies to show us here. Uh, what's on the table? Well, first of all, you have a prototype of the MC202 firmware display replacement. Basically, forget everything you know about the 202. There's a completely new sequencer in there with a lot of patterns that you can chain in song mode. There's an arpeggiator. There are additional envelopes and LFOs. And uh, there's, um, yeah, it's basically a completely new synthesizer apart what, from noise? the sound generation. Yes, noise. What? Yeah, great. And, um, yeah. Because the sequence is pretty notorious on this thing, it's quite difficult to program. I seem yeah, to I think remember. if you're a composer, you can pretty much manage the original, but otherwise you're lost. And <laughs> now it's a step-based uh, sequencer, like for the 101, but with a lot of nice editing features and uh, accents, portamento, noise. And what sort of what sort of things have we got in the menus as you scroll through here? What sort of here, are an here we have the normal play mode where we see which notes are playing. I can change the pattern that is playing and it will always stay in sync. But I can also record a quick song with three patterns and chain them however I like. I can just go in there and edit this song, replace patterns in the song, and there's an edit mode for the sequences themselves. So now I'm in a sequence, I can go through there, change uh, a note or change a note parameter like add accent or filter accent to that note. That's incredible, it seems so diverse compared to what was there already. Yeah, and then there's uh, an additional envelope for the filter, for example. They can just go in, adjust the amount, adjust, uh, let's just change the attack. And you will hear them on the filter. The same goes for, there's also an LFO, and I can change parameters like amount or LFO waveform, including a sample whole LFO. It's free running or synced to a MIDI clock, whichever you prefer. Uh, yeah, additional noise, so if I can trigger that per note. Some, okay, now you can hear the noise triggering. And I can adjust the case and, and so on of, the, of the, this. Uh, because the original 202 doesn't have noise, but now it does. Yeah. Nice feature for a bit of text, yeah. I'm just going to quickly show you the arpeggiator as well. So this is the arpeggiator. You can see a nice keyboard display, which ever notes by playing right now. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. And we have, of course, uh, you know, art modes like upwards, downwards, ping pong, random. But also a feature I personally really like is the key order arpeggiator. So I can, it's basically like a little sequencer. I can just program a little sequence in there and it will play that as an arpeggiator. It's in the order that you press Yeah. But I can also press one key multiple times. and we'll still play that in that order. And this is just one channel. While one channel is doing its thing, we can switch to another channel because there's another set of CV gate outputs and do the, everything I just showed you on the second channel completely independently. There's an independent clock divider for that. I can independently start stop the second channel. And there's even a third channel with uh, drums. And you can do the same here. The drums are lo-fi drum samples and they actually come out of the tape output. Oh, so they're in the machine. Uh, did the original have drums? No. Drums? No, no, no I don't no, remember no, the big drum. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you're kind of you're kind of known for doing lots of uh, hardware modifications. Yeah, we have uh, for for example Juno 6, Juno 60, Poly 6, Monopoly, SH101 and now SH uh, MC202. And yeah, it's it's coming up in a couple of months. Uh, will be available. Excellent. And do you know uh, how much it's going to cost the modification? Not sure yet, actually. Uh, about 300 euros or something in that range. Okay. Yeah. And is it available uh, for people to do themselves? Um, usually all our mods are do-it-yourself. In this case, you really need to, sold, to be able to solder very well, so we will look for synth techs all over the world who will then install it for you, including us, of course. Looks really good, looks amazing. I'm a big fan of the MC202. Uh, you also have this new drum module, which you've released, yeah. the 606 one. 
Exactly, it's a um, TR606 based drum module with a lot of additional parameters but we really took great care to preserve the original character of the 606. Um, it's already been out for a couple of months, but now we added a couple of more firmware features where you even can, you can even better play dynamically. So all the inputs are dynamic from one volt to 15 volts, so, and the sounds will be different depending on what trigger you send in. So uh, just to like, add greater depth yes, to the Yes, velocity. and dynamics. And if you trigger it via MIDI, you can now use all the inputs as uh, volume control, so you can yeah, dynamically change all the sounds. Excellent. Can we have a quick blast of the 606? Yeah. Perfectly in time with the turn as well, that's good. Of course, the original 606 didn't have many controls. No, the original 606 only had the silver volume controls, all the rest added by us. Oh, I but like that you've kept the color of the original, and yeah. that's really cool. And uh, we have these orange markings, and if you put uh, all the knobs to the orange markings, you get the original 606 sound completely. Oh, really? But then you can. Yeah, and last thing I would like to show you is uh, this here. Um, we developed a universal MIDI interface for string machines and organs and other polyphonic synthesizers. So this is just an example, but uh, we can play the uh, RS-202 via MIDI now. And this uh, is possible for a lot of other machines. Um, we have a list here, but it's far from being complete. And we are Organ donor, that's such a good name. <laughs> nice name. We are adding more and more machines to that list, so people can use their all string synths and polyphonic synths via MIDI. And what makes, what brings all of the uh, string synth together in order to be able to use this for all of them? What's the similarity between them? Um, well, usually there's uh, one oscillator per key, and in order to uh, interface them, we need to have an uh, analog switch for each key, and that's actually what we did. Um, I can, can show you. So here you see our interface. This is basically the the main board here with a MIDI connection, and then we get analog switch boards and they interface the key contacts. We just turn them on and off. And how much, uh, what sort of level of um, installs required for that, what sort of skill level? Uh, basic soldering. Um, we do installation manuals for different machines and then we customize the interface to that machine so you can buy a kit and just solder it in yourself. It's pretty simple, I think. Awesome, man. That's great. I know these. Uh, I know these string machines are heralded by a lot of people. You know, they're, yeah, they're they're really highly regarded. Yeah, the sound is great, but uh, many people, including me, cannot really play. And uh, MIDI is a great option. Though. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tobias. Yeah. Thanks for speaking to us. It's been uh, great to meet you, and uh, yeah, long may the modifications continue. With pleasure.